Um, okay, first I want to give my gratitude for everyone sticking around for the very last talk here. Uh, <laughs> so my name is Tyler and I've been doing research for a couple of years now at UC Berkeley as a PhD student with Jeff Neaton. Um, so I've had the uh, you know, fortunate pleasure of being able to use uh, Pearl Modern and NERSC resources. Um, so yeah, I was just going to give a quick talk going through some of the highlights of um, kind of recent structural uh, investigations into this very new novel um, layered magnetic material called FGT. And in particular, we're gonna be looking at the cobalt doped case of this system and some of the really exotic mag magnetic textures that evolved because of this doping. So uh, to start off, let's kind of introduce the main player. Um, so uh, F5GT, uh, we can see the functional unit cell here shown over on the right. Uh, and one thing that you know may first stick out to you is the fact that you might count six, uh, you know, iron atoms in that unit cell, given the fact that there's, you know, five in the stoichiometry. So the fact of the matter is that the upper and lower uh, iron atoms, Fe1 up and Fe1 down, those are both 50% occupied as of findings that have shown that, you know, from XRD that basically those are equally uh, occupied and or unoccupied. Um, and then, um, so that's one of the things that kind of complicates the structure. Um, but um, just to, to backtrack just a little bit of other things that make it exciting to study this material before we get fully into the structure, um, it is, you know, uh, it's a pretty popular topic uh, recently trying to be able to build spintronic devices that can get ultra thin. And so this new material being able to exhibit that is particularly lucrative. On top of that, it, it remains ordered all the way up into room temperature, something that could also be enhanced by this cobalt doping as well. And then we just talked a little bit about the structure and the fractional occupancies of those FE1 sites. Um, but in general, since there are a lot of different um, structural polymorphs of this material, um, that is something that permits us to see some things that you know may, you may not ordinarily observe in other magnetic materials. Um, so on top, just to elaborate a little bit more about what can happen when you start to dope this um, and how you dope this. Um, so changing the the room temperature, the Curie temperature of the material, changing the magnetic overall uh, temp, uh, the magnetic ordering all overall. It can go into antiferromagnetic order, for instance. Um, it can go into different helical textures, and the main one we'll be talking about is the skirmion textures. Um, you can change the anisotropy. So in some of these materials, when you actually lower the overall iron content, it can be in-plane anisotropy. Suddenly it becomes out-of-plane anisotropy when you introduce enough. Um, and um, so that's, uh, as I kind of walked into a little bit, um, on top of transition metal substitutional doping, you can actually introduce vacancies or remove those vacancies at these two one sites. Um, and so, again, these are all essentially the parameters we have to play with, along with um, recent uh, literature studies have also shown that by uh, essentially either quenching it or annealing it, we can actually get um, ordering of how these sites fill in exactly. And the ordering of how they fill in within the layer actually has a pretty significant um, uh, you know, impact on the material itself and all the properties that we just discussed. Um, one thing I didn't even get to in terms of degrees of freedom when I'm talking about all these structural polymorphs is the fact that the stacking order can vary between these two. So on the far left side, that's introducing what I'd say is sort of its sister compound, which is structurally a lot less complicated, which is F3GT. It has a set stacking order. It's very, very similar to um, TMDs, um, if anyone's familiar with transition metal dichalcogenides. But now as we move up towards uh, F5GT, there's at least three dominant stacking orders that have been observed. ABC, which is usually also called rhombohedral stacking. AA stacking, which would be the perfect direct line, uh, vertical alignment, which would be AA stacking. And then this third one, which is the most interesting one, I think, um, and it's because it leads to a non somorphic crystal structure, is AA prime. Another kind of layman way of phrasing it is a zigzag structure. So as you can see here, you know, looking at just like unit cell, the unit cell here, at least for the two layers, you can see how if you kind of follow along a line of iron atoms, that that order flips every alternating layer. Um, and so one of the things that's very fascinating that I want to talk about is the fact that that zigzag structure we see actually only emerges when we get up to 50% cobalt doping. Um, and so this is actually just a, a figure that's a, uh, illustrating a little bit more on um, what happens when you choose cobalt on, a, you know, um, not that 50% criteria that I just mentioned, which is showing that one, the stacking changes. So you can see one reason that these are complicated is that you know um, you, you can actually change how they stack just based on the doping you add, along with the overall magnetic order. Um, cool. And then to the point I was making earlier with the AA prime stacking here is in our collaboration um, here at UC Berkeley, 
Uh, this image we're seeing is um, an LTM image, which is Lorentz Transition Electron Microscopy image, showing the magnetic field on the surface of this material. And so those very beautiful rainbow surface, uh, kind of circular vortices are actually the um, signatures that are showing that we're getting these really interesting spin helical structures on the surface of this material. And what's even more exciting and hasn't been discovered in many materials is the fact that these skirmion structures, these really interesting spin vortices, actually remain stable up into room temperature. And so there's these hopes that these massive magnetic quasi particles is what skirmions are um, would be able to serve as some sort of information bit if we were to try and develop the field of skirmionics. Um, and so where we come in, hopefully this hasn't been too much of an introduction going way too far, um, but um, the uh, goal here is to try and use first principle calculations in order to determine some of the reasons that we get these different structural transitions where some of the you know magnetic Heisenberg exchange parameters that you know play a big role in this where are those all originate um, so I'm going to try and run really fast here just to try and get to actually kind of meet um, just very quick kind of run on what a skirmion is so on the far right uh, side you see a, a very cool picture which would be showing like the magnetic spin structure on a surface of what a skirmion is there's a few different variants of it but the premise is that it is this non-collinear spin structure, so they're not aligned perfectly with a ferromagnet, they're not anti-aligned like an anti-ferromagnet, they have this interesting um, kind of vortex pattern. And so the thing that makes it fascinating and makes it you know, something that we'd actually ascribe a word to, calling it a skirmion, like a quasi-particle, is because there is some invariant quantity that we can compute. So the integral expression is saying, if we were to actually compute that integration on the surface, there is some fixed integral number, which is usually kind of called um, um, you know, it's essentially the invariant that's associated with the skirmion. And so that index is something um, that kind of qualifies it for this, this um, you know, category of magnetic order. Um, so what actually leads to the formation of these kinds of um, textures it is essentially an interplay between two different exchanges between neighboring atoms within the material. And so one is the direct exchange, which is this J term. That's the one that, depending on the sign of it, it either wants to make the, ad the spins agree between neighbors or disagree, which would be a negative case. Um, uh, then the one that's more fascinating for us is this anti-symmetric exchange here, which is the dij. So it's related with this cross product. It's a vectorial quantity. And so that's the one that you can think of, and I was hoping to try and illustrate with the diagram, is that it's the one that actually makes it want to point at 90 degrees, which is where the cross product would be zero. And so it actually originates from the same place as j would, which is um, a result of spin orbit coupling, but it also requires, in order to not cancel out, a low symmetry to the structure. Um, so, um, kind of the, going back to the image here, what we're going to be looking for is essentially, um, you know, if we were to consider pairs of atoms, so these would be where the direct exchanges would be in order to create the magnetic texture. Um, so the idea here is that there could be a J term between all of those, which is what makes it fat for, uh, magnetic in the first place. But the issue here is that the essentially uh, the laws that, that dictate, you know, based on symmetry, what terms and what orientations these DMI pairwise uh, vectors should ex like orient themselves to, uh, that they should actually cancel out. So this yellow one should cancel exactly with this one, and this turquoise one should cancel out with this turquoise one. And they are restricted by a mirror plane to all be pointing transverse to those orientations. And so what's really interesting is that if suddenly there were ordering, within the monolayer of how those one sites filled, suddenly we break that, um, you know, uh, essentially the, the cancellation of different DMI terms. Um, and so this is actually referring to another work that actually tried to compute some of this DMI. And so what they found is that when you do go to this perfectly ordered, assuming just one subplane gets filled, um, suddenly uh, there is this sort of asymmetry. We see a stronger anti-symmetric exchange on terms towards the two site than the um, other uh, atomic species, or the, the other iron sites within the, the unit cell. Um, cool, so getting towards some of the abonistic calculations, the goal here is to try and explore the parameter space a lot more than just one idealized motif. Now it's a very um, complicated system, it's, it's, it's got some sort of contribution from spin orbit coupling, so, um, and it's a metal as well, um, so it's going to have to have a high K density, um, it's going to have to have um, uh, spin orbit coupling enabled as I mentioned, um, and so we are going to run vast calculations on a few of these different idealized motifs in different stacking configurations. And then beyond that, we may try and consider essentially more exotic mixes of these idealized motifs. Um, so the very first one was just an absolute just base ground state calculation of a couple of ideal instances. Um, after doing an ionic relaxation of everything, uh, we find that comparing it to the ABC stacked of just like one 
polymorphy had chosen, which is the all up phase shown earlier, um, that there's a very small um, uh, difference between ground state energies um, on the scale of MeV per functional unit cell. Um, and so that's something that may tell us that, hmm, I mean, it's, it's, it reassures us the fact that all these stacking orders are very similar to each other, so it'd be easy to shift them. But the thing that was more fascinating is that the CK7, uh, and so this is just a small subset we've taken of, of a broader sweep of something around like 50 different um, structural kind of polymorphs here. And so the CK7 ones in particular, there are these two by two by two unit cells where we very randomly, uh, a permutation of different one sites occupied in an AA structure and an AA prime structure as well. And the observation is that that shows a significant reduction in the energy. So that's something that suggests that there's a significant mixture of the different sites filled in the ground state for the parent compound. Um, but the thing that was fascinating is since we want to study doping, we want to see how that system evolves as we go up. So what we did is we considered one of these disordered sites, which I'll sometimes call the UDU motif, and then the other one is UUU, which is the simple filling one subplane, and we looked at how that changes if we manually manipulate the number of electrons explicitly given into the system. And so the idea is that, you know, there's probably some site sensitivity to it, like where the, the cobalt sits in one of the one sites or the three sites, but the goal here is just to say, hey, if we introduce more electrons, does, does the ground state shift within the, the intracell kind of ordering of these sites? And the evidence here is showing that as we introduce more uh, electrons in the system, we end dope it, we introduce either cobalt or something else that's higher valency, suddenly we're starting to prefer this all upfill, which just as a friendly reminder, that's the low symmetry that we require in order to have this non-collinear spin texture in order to get skirmions. So this is something that's reassuring, showing also that we would expect to get the more exotic spin, you know, behavior when we introduce more doping. This is a small side, so I'm going to go really quickly and maybe skip, but one of the things that's also very fascinating we're studying is the difference between that UDU phase and that UUU shows very, very dramatic changes also in the electronic structure. So um, the particular notes here is just that it is a metal, uh, you can see by all the bands that cross through, but one of the things that's very interesting is that by going into the UDU phase, um, which is to say mixing up the one sites between different kind of neighboring unit cells, suddenly you have a significant reduction in the dispersion. So we're actually working on trying to, to model this with some sort of type binding model in order to try to explain exactly why suddenly at the specific K and gamma points within the unit cell, those get reduced by the ordering of these one sites. Back to the main part, one of the other studies we want to do, since we didn't get a conclusive result on the uh, stacking of these materials, is we said, hey, what if instead of just computing ground states of different stacking configurations, we actually created larger unit cells adding roughly, you know, uh, net like 10 angstroms in the gap. And we said, what if we just manually step two relaxed motifs together and we see uh, what the binding energy is between different bilayers or between different monolayer motifs. And so uh, again, we considered essentially three different stacking configurations, these four different motifs. Um, so that's essentially kind of repeating this 20 step calculation on roughly four times three different um, uh, combinations. Um, so that's, you know, going by 12 times 20 um, calculations. Um, and so the observation here is that, um, oh, the overlapping. Uh, um, <laughs> so uh, the really kind of reassuring kind of result here is that there is now a significant change in the bilayer energies that we didn't necessarily capture necessarily in just the, the point ground state calculations. So just to be clear here, since the, the uh, size kind of got a little mixed here, is that the red curve is showing A prime stacking in one of the configurations, and yellow shows IA prime in another configuration of different motifs, which is the one that's actually illustrated here. Um, and then uh, the green and the blue are showing A stacking um, of those similar motifs, but just differently oriented. Um, and so the observation here is that you do have this A prime stacking favored when you get into that all UUU phase. So a little bit complicated, but just kind of working back what we've done so far is DMI for skirmions requires this low symmetry monolayer. We found that it occurs when we introduce doping. And this observation is that when we have that motif in play, it seems like we want to bind in the AA prime's exact fashion. Um, cool. So then just summarizing it a little bit more, uh, um, uh, just as I mentioned, we saw that one up down site ordering is something that's absolutely essential and introduces a lot of polymorphs that we have to consider in our calculations. Um, as in a small side, we also saw that the band structure, trying to understand exactly what's happening at the electronic structure, um, that gets significantly morphed by exactly this ordering. Um, and then by doing some, um, you know, computing different structural energetics, considering all the polymorphs, uh, we found that the 
point direct gamma set calculations don't give us a ton of information, but doing these bilayer formation calculations to figure out what the binding energy between particular motifs has been really elucidating. Um, so uh, thank you. Hopefully I didn't go, luckily there's no one past me, but uh, <laughs> thank you very much for your time, everyone. Online. I'm curious, so a couple of things. When you say discover, do you mean like they've been co constructed in simulation or are these naturally occurring? Oh, the skirmia, the, the magnetic texture? Or... Yeah, or, or the, the, the F, F5 or FE5 GE, like the whatever, the, the material that you're studying. Yeah, no, it's been synthesized. It's been synthesized. Definitely. Okay. In okay. fact, I think the first time it was really looked into was like around 2017. Okay. And it's been quite a journey since then because they, I mean, just trying to understand all these structural mixes is they actually thought it was entirely something different. 2018, they did a little bit better. By 2020, 2021, a lot of people are trying different dopings, but um, uh, yeah, there's still a lot experimentally that's not known entirely about the structures, but it's, it's been synthesized by, I'd say at least I know a dozen different groups that have been working okay. with this material. And are they able to synthesize the different versions of it? It's very fascinating. You, you know, it varies between different groups, whether or not they can get, because this is a good slide to fix on. Some, some groups have only been able to synthesize this mixed ordering. Mm -hmm. um, and then some will show that based on how you thermally uh, uh, kind of cool down the material during the process, you can actually get this. Um, and some stuff in between. And some actually get, sorry to get more complicated, but yeah. that stacking between A and ABC, um, some people have found combinations of those. So it's not just a single crystal okay. material. So um, that's all in the parent. Still, people are trying to dope it more, but um, again, because of the room temperature, magnetic, and metallic properties, I think it's become a really, like a lot of people are chasing, which is really cool. And so the magnetic properties have been tested experimentally as well? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and um, yeah, like the anisotropy one was very cool, where they showed as you go from F4 GT to F6, um, you can change it from in plane to out of plane. Like, there, there's, there's um, a couple other things on that, but it's been really cool to watch. Nice. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.